And welcome back, everyone, to Meta HSC, our second game of the night. It takes us to the SA and T division to see Glenunga take on St. Paul's Co College. I'm Chris, that's midnight, and well, hopefully it won't be too long a gap here until we get underway for the second game of the evening. Yeah, it should be quite good, Chris, to get into things here between, of course, St. Paul's College and Glenunga International High School. Now, the other fun little thing about this game, Chris, is, of course, I think I mentioned to see previously, of course, of course, the 3v3, but unless, uh, unless my ears deceive me, this is going to be a little bit of a smaller affair, only the two versus two. So, a little bit different to what we're used to, but sh still should be quite an exciting game, because, well, you've got to be a little bit more on top of it, because there's no third man to rely on when you're doing your rotations. Yeah, defences can be so much more critical in a these two two v two games, especially when you can easily get caught out on a overcommit. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens as we're probably about twenty seconds away from things kicking off. And well, Glenunga looking to try and add to their pretty decent tally at the moment. Two and one in the region. Obviously the Red Barons are currently the best in ESANT, currently at Frio, the only uh, undefeated team left now in the t the middle state and territory. So, yeah, that would be interesting to see if they can keep that going for them. But for us here, it's going to be... It's going to be Glenunga seeing if they can lift their record to 3-1 to one and keep a nice hold... or nice firm hold on second place in this region. Well, let's find out, Chris, because it is go time for game number one here. Glenunga and St. Paul's battle butt heads here. As, um, wait, am I blind or am I seeing multiple? The AI uh, are getting involved, bots, so that's bots. probably yep. not intentional. Yeah, they forgot to uh, turn off the bots, it seems, so, uh, looks like we will be uh, <laughs> remaking the lobby then, which is always unfortunate, but it does what? occasionally happen. So, yeah, that's a bit of a pain, it isn't it, as? Doesn't it add to the challenge when the bots get involved, though? Like,. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but doesn't that just add to the to the thriller battle when you're like, oh god, now I have to deal with the bots in the in the match? Uh maybe, but nah. I mean, even the even the uh, stronger bots in the uh, game can be a little bit uh how do you do, so Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully uh the uh, server will be back up very quickly. In fact I'm joining back in, so hopefully uh is this better? I see. I see the words two v two, Chris, which I think is the correct thing I want to be seeing. Yes, into this is, so hopefully, so... hopefully, it only happens once. If it happens twice, then I, the gods are against us or something like that. Yeah, pretty much. So, hopefully, that is not the case. As we get everyone into the server now, I believe we're actually just waiting on one more. There we go. So we'll get them to ready up immediately and uh, take two of this. Uh, Best of three will hopefully go well this time. Well, let's find out, Chris. It's about to be kick off. Hopefully, I'm not going to get interrupted this time with a sudden arrival of the bots. The boss looks like they have been locked out of the arena, and so it is go time. Game number one. The kickoff doing pretty decently for Galunka, with Ravino winning that particular one, and you might be able to get followed through there, but the defense is a little too solid. Yep, able to carry the ball out. Of their own half here, but therefore he's got an open net, and that's what we're talking about with two v twos. You have to pretty much keep one person at the fence unless you're guaranteed a goal, because it's so much easier to counter attack. And well, you can see why Zephyr just gets a free net, gets a free shot, and he gets the opening goal. Yeah, and a good way to start that one, Gonga, with the first goal coming in so far. But will they be able to get the second? It looks not bad, actually. As the parent clears the ball up in the air, but Jelly does get in the way, and the offense does die for a little bit. Yeah, it does soften up here, and this is actually a good opportunity for Hugs Death, but Ravino keeps control of the ball, gets a 50, he tries with a fake, but Wobbly Jelly knows exactly what's happening there. An easy little flick of the ball to the side walls as Hugs Death tries to get a pass one, but once again, Ravino is a little bit too strong for him there. Nice demo, opens it up here for all the side of St. Paul's, but Zephyr immediately puts the ball onto the attack here for that orange side. Ravino, beautiful touch, but just couldn't finish it off. Zephyr sends it a bit high as well, and 
Well, at the moment, no real defense are needed for Blanunga as they keep the ball well into attack. They make the rotations back now. Ugseth, too soft a touch there to really punish that pure aggression coming out from Glenunga and well, for this orange team, they're more than happy to keep the ball in the midfield because half the time it does seem like they're just winning it strongly. Yeah, their 2v2 team seems to be a little bit stronger right now with constant offense. The ball's in front, but Vino not able to get in position. They're trying to pull his way through. He actually does. What a steal coming out. Yeah, good play there from Ravino. Just bumps oh. out Wobbly Jelly, gets the ball into the corner, and while he's not being a bit, he's not being aggressive there, he just waits for the possible return. It does bunch. Sorry, bounce out of the net, and well, he just thinks to tap it in in front of an open net. So, 2 0 lead here for the side of Glenunga, and they might look to make it free here as Zephyr gets a nice little break. Only Wobbly Jelly to try and stop this attack, but that's just been perfectly oh. set up. Zephyr, though, has he on the handbrake, but he eventually sends it in. He picks himself up a double. Yeah, and Hugs was just so far out of position. Jelly trying to find a 1v2 and is just not able to get into the positions. Hugs was on their way back, I believe, from a boost collection. So they're like, yeah. oh god, you know, just not in the right position. And that's the hardest part of 2v2s, is there's just so little resources in terms of actually what you've got on the field to play with, that, you know, you've got to go get boost, you've got to be in the right position for defense, you've got to be in position to stop the um, attack coming in. So there's so much you have to do, it is really difficult to perform correctly. Yeah, and this is why 2v2 and 1v1 Rocket League is so much different compared to its 3v3 free, free counterpart. Just with that, with so much extra space, it you get punished a lot more for being overly aggressive. So, yeah, it's, I mean, for Glenunga, they've been able to stay on the attack for the most part and not be punished for it, but, yeah, it also just opens up the other side of the field where if your defenses are a little bit weak, your opponent's... Well, they just get a better opportunity to go onto the pounce as Hugsef gets 150 going, but Ravino once again blocking him off and denying him a chance at net. And now he's just going to try and carry the ball, but he passes it back, back nicely to Zephor. Now goes into the corner, Ravino on high, centers it up. Here comes Zephor, but he's a tad too late for that play there. Hugsef tries to carry it out once again, but he just continually loses possession here. That's a very good angle there. And Zephyr, that's a nice goal for him as he picks up the hat-trick. Yeah, and that's looking fantastic now for Glenunga here. And part of the problem that's going on is that the members of St. Paul's are not getting access to the boosts that they kind of need to yeah. um, make their plays. We saw them in the last play, Hugs didn't have any boost. Like, there was so little they could do. The ball's in the air, they're trying to ride the wall, but without any boost, it is just such an impossible task to do correctly. Indeed, it's... It's just... As I said, it's just why 2v2s can be so much harder than 3v3s. You have just having that one man less, it just makes it so much harder mm. to get everything done cleanly. It mm. does seem a bit counterintuitive, but it honestly makes you life hard as Hugsef should get this one in. The first response finally for St. Paul's, and it was finally that counter to that aggression from Glenunga that finally sees some Pauls get on the board. Yeah, Glenunga committed very heavily to the offense with both members there. Um, the failed shot, and then of course they just couldn't pull back in time. St. Paul's, St. Paul's had a member too far back, and that's just the, I suppose, what happens in 2v2s. You're just not always going to have a man on the defense. This is how it be like, as Rubino does clear the ball out safely, passing it over to Zephyr. What is he going to do? He's going to go fully for the offense there. But Jelly is oh, in nice position. Play. Ball goes high. Is there follow-up from Rubino? Yes, there is, but not able to make it go in just yet. Yeah, sends it a little bit too narrow there. And, well, we'll deny him a fifth goal here. Hugsef, nice bit of play just to punt it onto the attack. But look at that. Rubino oh, good. just immediately steals it and... That is why going on the aggression on the aggressive path is so dangerous in 2v2s. Unless you can keep control, you can easily get counted. And Ravino just pops one on top of him. There's no way of saving that one. 5-1 to one here for Glenunga. And, well, this is looking like shades of our first game of the night here. Midnight, one team just dominating the other team, trying their best. But especially in 2v2s, it just, it just makes it hard. Yeah, it's really difficult. It's... Match there as we got steals it again. Yeah, goal number six comes through here. All it takes in a 2v2 is one error, and it is so hard to fix that problem because, well, 
you're suddenly out of position, and if, the, if your teammate isn't basically ready for you to make the mistake, and let's be honest, your teammate shouldn't be entering the game with the mentality of, I'm just going to catch all of the mistakes made, it's quite a difficult journey to undertake here. Um, as 50 seconds left on the clock here, six goals in favor of Brenunga in game number one of the series. And with everything that we're seeing so far, Chris, it shouldn't be too long before game number one is done and dusted in Glenunga's favor. Well, we might get a Brazil beforehand here. Ravino with the uh, flip reset doesn't work out, but that ball in a dangerous spot here. But Zephyr, nowhere to be found. Where is Zephyr? Out oh, there he is. He's in the midfield. He's trying to regain possession. He gets it centered up. Ravino coming in at a pretty decent click, but he gets demoed out of that play. Bubbly Jelly now just picks it up. And they're just going to try and burn the clock here. But Ravino just steals it away. And could this be to Brazil? Ravino can't get the second touch here. Hug Steph just keeps it on the wall. Time ticks away. It looks like we are going to be cr cruelly denied to Brazil here. The score is <laughs> going to be ending 6-1. to one. Ravino tries his best to keep it up. But eventually hits the ground. And well, no Brazil. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it's going well. For Glenunga there. Sure, we didn't get the Brazil, Chris, but it's still a fantastic start for the Glenunga International High School players. They've gotten such a strong performance in the 2v2. They are, they are being allowed to just sort of play offense with little to no punishment. And that's kind of why it went so well for them. They're continually on the offense, continually throwing the ball forwards. And this, there was a goal against them, but one goal when you're constantly on the offense. That's a that's like a punishment you're willing to take. Yeah, indeed, and well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens now. Well, the second game of this series now for some pauls because we've got a three v three now, so this does change the dynamics All of the right, game. Um... So, uh, yeah, that's all. But uh, anyways, I thought that series is going to be two v two all around, but. We get back to 3v3 Rocket League now, and my point was has been completely destroyed as, well, in a 3v3, everything changes up now. you got that extra man, so, yeah, my point about being a bit more aggressive sort of falls on deaf ears. Yeah, it's uh, a bit of a di dynamic shift coming in here, and I wonder, will that help St. Paul's getting that third man? Because it wasn't that they were playing poorly, it's just that they, with the lack of an extra player, they really struggled to have someone back on defense when their offense didn't go the way that they really wanted it to. So will that help them out coming into game at number two, Chris? I don't know. The only way we can find out is, well, through the game. We are a bit over 30 seconds in, and so far, the ball has just sort of been dancing around the midfield for the most part. Yeah, and that is huge for some pauls here as they really try and recover after that first game. Zephyr, though, brings it into the penalty box. Can't... Send it in, however, we'll only get credit for the shot. Ravino, though, nice little flick there. Nearly goes in, but forces uh, Dan W, the uh, third man, for uh, some pauls. He gets a nice save there, but Zephyr seals the ball away here, and he has an open net. That should be a no! The angle deceives, and, well, he just couldn't keep control to send it back in. They're starting to really pressure the goal line here, Lenunga, but just can't break through just yet. Uh, yeah, but they're getting close, Chris. They've had some really good rounds here, but it's been a lot slower oh, of a game, but this looks good, and they do sneak it over the defender. Yeah, they sneak it over there, and just... Dan W just really caught out in a bad spot there. Get the uh, handbrake off in time to flick back around for the save, and well, the wall just falls into the net, so... Glenunga gets the early lead here, might be two as well. Ravino, can he make it in time? No, Wobbly Jelly just pops it into the corner. Good save there from what could have been a catastrophic kickoff goal. Yeah, but the save at least keeps the game you know, as is with one, one goal apiece in Glenunga's favour. Glenunga looking like they really want to try and make something here. All three members are charging forward, so this needs to kind of work out for them. Ravino goes it out wide. Dan isn't able to get the most solid connection, but hugs is there for backup, but it's just not going to work out. Wobbly, though, what can they do with the ball? Try to take it up. It looks decent, but Ravino once again, making sure that nothing slips fast. Yeah, doing some great work on defensive Ravino as uh, 
That's about three Thanks. different fake outs there from <laughs> both sides. Doesn't resonate too much, but Glenunga goes back onto the attack here. Ravino nearly gets the ball perfectly set up there for Zephor, but Ugstef really doing some good work just to try and stymie the attack from Glenunga. But can he keep it that way for long here? He picks up the ball, he tries to bring it to the midfield, does bait out Zephor. But the defense is quickly rallying here, and look who's taking it away from him once again. Ravino seals the oh. ball, but Ugsef comes in for the second attempt. But once again, Ravino just being absolutely massive on defense here, really keeping it clean at the moment and denying any sort of attacking pressure that this and poor side has. Yeah, I refer to him as a brick, I refer to Ravino as a brick wall, except the fact that they're also doing really well on the offensively. So it's doing a phenomenal job for Glenunga right now, as they will once again get the offense. Dawn is back on defense for Sephora. I think he's going to try to set up a pass, but it does not work out according to plan. Ravino has the ball set up high, but there is no one in position for the follow through. And once again, a bit of a wide clear and just taking it slow. But taking it slow isn't bad for Glenunga. They've got a goal up. There's a minute and a half left. Sure, one goal, as we always say, Chris, isn't much of a safety net, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. It is as well. They get very close to getting what would have been a magnificent goal, but Ravino gets denied by a save in the crossbar as he keeps the ball on the attack here. But his teammate is holding back for the moment, waiting for the opportunity to pounce. Here they go. Zephyr taps it down to Andil, and well, Godly Andil, there we go, has been perfectly set up there by Zephyr. The two players are just held back. They waited for their time, and they shunned perfectly when needed. Yeah, they lured the defense out from the well, well, standard position. Says, come on, come into the corners, try fight us in here. And it worked out brilliantly for them. Two goals are now one minute left on the clock. Kananga is in a bit of a safer position than they were 30 seconds ago. And I'm sure if they can get a third goal, that would just make life peachy in order to win game number two. Is Jelly setting it up for Hugs. Hugs trying to go with it with Dan on the backup. This could be something, but not able to get past the four. Yeah, the defense has just been too strong here from Glenunga, and it's pretty much frustrated St. Paul's at every single possibility in Game 1 and in Game 2 as well. They've had a few chances here St. Paul's, but especially the likes of uh, Ravino and Zephyr as well, just being really strong on defense has just denied him any oh. sort of attacking pressure, as this should be the goal to end it here, but Jelly has rotated back in at time to get the save, but as time ticks away here, they're looking to just try and put the final nail in the coffin, but that might just come through with time here for Glenunga as we enter the final 10 seconds. They need a goal desperately here, St. Paul's, but they're not going to get it, and with that, Glenunga will go 3-1 here in the SANT region as Ravino will get a one-second goal there. Puts the nail in the coffin, but... Yeah, it's just been dominant suffering there. A double and, well, two massive defensive efforts in both games probably means that he becomes MVP. It's looking good for him as the timer is going to kick down here. That is going to be game number two done and dusted between these two schools here. What has been a phenomenal series. The 2v2 to kick it off with and, of course, the 3v3 to end it all. But it will be Glenunga coming out with the victory. And what was a very entertaining series, Chris. Yeah, if both of those games were 3v3s. Pro we, there's a no zero chance that we make it into a decider game. But yeah, just not having that third man in the first game just really co cost uh, some pulls there. I do think Ravino has played a few 2v2s before, if my memory serves me correctly. So it's somewhat familiar territory for him. And well... It just really showed. He was strong in defense. He was strong on offense as well. And yeah, he uh, that means he becomes MVP for the series. But for now, at the very least, we'll go to another break. And stay tuned because we'll bring you two games tonight from the WA region after this break. So stay tuned.